In this video, I want to explore why E is used as the language for natural change. Most of us know that all the exponential expressions should be converted to base E. But why? Why we need to convert, why we can convert, and how to convert. We first need to understand the requirements for math expressions. We use math expressions to describe math relationship in nature. For example, in natural growth, when the quantity doubles itself per unit time. To represent the population at any time t, we use this power expression. The first requirement is it must be operational so that we can compute the results. For example, when t is an integer, this expression can be evaluated by multiplying 2 t times. Another requirement is it must be easy to aggregate for derivation purposes. So when two power terms multiply together, we can easily combine them. But when we have non integer time, this expression is not computable. So this power expression is not complete yet because it's not fully computable. A different way is to think about what the result is if we know the growth rate. But the only tricky thing is it's continuous growth, which means the growth happens nonstop. Each tiny interval, it grows a bit. Then the next interval, the combo will grow again, and so on. Say each unit is growing at r unit per unit time. To compute the outcome for any time t, we just need to think about how much this one unit has grown during this period. Since the speed is r unit per unit time, now t time passes by. So one unit should have grown by r t units, right? Now we can break into many intervals. So during each interval, when unit produces rt over n. This way, going through n intervals, we end up with this compound term. This is directly computable if we know the growth rate. Choose n large enough, any computers will give you a good result. But no matter how many intervals you use, it's still discrete. To make it truly continuous, we use binomial theorem, breaking up the result into many components. Now, we really need to think about what is continuous growth. It's when you have infinite number of intervals. In that case, infinity, infinity minus 1, infinity minus 2, and so on, they are all the same. So all these canceled out, leaving us a nice formula. This happens only when n goes to infinity. So we say the limit of this fast discrete growth is the continuous growth. So if we know the natural growth rate, this formula tells us how to compute the result easily. So the next question is how to get this natural growth rate? The answer is log operation. Log operation is very intuitive. If one unit becomes two units per unit time, then the growth rate would be 2 minus 1 divided over the starting unit. But the trick here is the growth happens continuously, so the offspring are also contributing. This simple approach is attributing all the growth to the starting unit, which is incorrect. So log operation looks at the growth in an incremental way and back out the portion coming from the starting unit. For example, we can view the growth in 10 steps, during which 10% growth happens. The trick is to find out the weight coming from the starting unit. In the first step, 100% comes from the starting unit, becoming 1.1. Step 2, 1 over 1.1 comes from the starting unit, becoming 1.2. Step 3, 1 over 1.2 comes from the starting unit, becoming 1.3. You can see a pattern here. Going to the next step, 
is 1 over 1.3, 1 1.4, 1 and so on, until 1 over 1.9. So to calculate log 2, we can approximate it by summing them up. It's about 0.7187. You will get a more accurate answer if you use more steps. In a nutshell, log operation sums up all of these weighted growth with the weight inverse to the size as the size grows from 1 to x. Now, with the natural growth rate known, we can compute the result. But if you just use the operations as expression, sure, it's computable. But when it comes to derivation, it's not easy to aggregate. On the other hand, this power expression, although it's easy to aggregate, is not fully computable. But there is one special base that's both operational and easy to aggregate. That's E. You need to first understand why it's possible to switch between different bases. This is the cell growth path along time. Depending on the unit time we choose for observation, a same exponential relationship can be expressed in different bases. For example, say we choose here as unit time to observe, it happens to be 2. So we would express it as 2 to the power of t. But if we are to observe twice the interval, a doubling relationship would become a quadrupling one. So with all these possibilities, which base should we choose? We define the time unit as the time when the starting unit produces one unit. So the natural growth rate is one unit per unit time. Because the offspring also produces, we end up being bigger than 2, say the total is e. Many people focus on what this number e is. You can find it by this limiting series, roughly 2.71. But that's not the point. What's important is E can be used as the computable base. Once using base E, now at any time t, the size should be e to the power of t. But it's more than the representation, it's computable. Because during this time, the starting unit has produced t unit. Divided over n intervals, use it as the growth rate, compound n times, this is the outcome. Expand it and take the limit, it can be computed as this series. So e to the power of t is perfectly computable. So any other base should be converted to base e. All we need is to figure out how the two readings correspond to each other. For time t in one system, it will have different reading in the other. But they both correspond to the same size. While this representation is not computable, the one in base E is. And they are equivalent. All we need is to figure out what this t prime is. No matter how you define the time unit, the number of units produced by the starting unit during this period should be the same under both systems. In the first system, it produces log 2 times t. In the second system, it produces 1 times t prime. Hence, t prime is log 2 times t. Therefore, 2 to the power of t equals to e to the power of log 2 t. But remember, this is operational. That's why, for exponential growth, we use base e to express them. So they are simple and compact and also operational.